Hi, everyone. I finally have pulled myself away from watching all that's going on with this key bridge in Maryland and want to first give out our thoughts, go out to everyone that's involved with that. It seems that there were no vehicles, according to what I've recently heard, were um, taken down, but there were workers on the bridge and they're still searching for some of them. So guys, please pray for them. In the meantime, the first thing I thought about when I saw this was the Sunshine Skyway Bridge in Florida that leads from Palmetto area over to Tampa. Well, it's a route that many people take to get to Tampa. It's a lot quicker than going the other route, other way around. And it's a better view too. It's a beautiful view of the water. I wanted to show you guys some clips of what it looks like. I actually wish I could find the picture. I have a beautiful picture of the new skyway and it's got the moon in the background and it's absolutely gorgeous. So this is what it looked like after the, the incident occurred. One thing that I noticed here too, first thing that stuck out to me when I went back and looked at these images, you see those little dots in the, in, down there in the, in the bottom? They're the barricades that block the main bridge, the main portions of the bridge. So if a ship's going to go towards that, it's going to hit that before it hits the bridge and that's supposed to stop them, right? same type of stoppers that they have in that Maryland key bridge but wait till you see the stoppers that they have on the noop in the skyway this happened in May of 1980 it was before I ever moved to Florida and obviously by the time I got there the bridge the new bridge was up and uh, I just heard a lot of stories a lot of people talked about it there were some people that wouldn't even go over the new bridge the new bridge is very it's structured a little bit well it's structured a lot different than this one. So let's look at some of the images that, are, that I'll show you guys. Pretty much the same thing happened is it hit it around the middle, it, right off to the, off to the side of the middle. But on this particular instance, it took down a portion of the bridge. And the morning that it went down, it was very, very, very foggy. Since all this has happened, there's some portions of the old bridge that are now fishing piers. They stop. They go so far out. They sit obviously next to the, the new Skyway, but they go so far out. And they're so, so here's the here's where the bridge was. It was 14 miles long, and at the time, it was one of the longest bridges in the world. And to the south is Palmetto area, which goes into Bradenton, which then leads down to Sarasota, Florida. And it's the route of 275. If anybody's ever heard of 275 in Florida, to the north of the bridge is St. Petersburg, Florida. And you could take this route and it leads you straight over into the Tampa area via I-275. And it's coming out of the port of Tampa, which where we have a few cruise ships that come out of. We actually now, we can only handle so many cruise ships. I say we because I used to live there. We can only handle so many cruise ships. The bigger ones can't fit underneath the bridge. So a lot of the big cruises, you have to go over to Fort Lauderdale to get in, into the larger cruise ships. I think it's, it's the Carnival Paradise, I think is what the one that goes out of Port of Tampa. But this gives you a view of how the bridge was built. And the new one is pretty much shaped the same way. You go around to the side and as you're coming up on the bridge, it, it curves so you can see the, the bridge from one side of it. It looks a lot like the Key Bridge, doesn't it? But again, you see over to the right, you see the stoppers, those little bitty things, those little bitty things. Now, one thing I learned in watching some of the documentaries on these is that the main support columns in the middle of the bridge are much larger and tougher than the other columns that lead. Like just if you look, I don't know if you guys can see my cursor. I don't, I, I doubt you can, but so you see where the middle of the bridge is. You see the main support columns in the middle. And then if you go up to the, just take your eyes and go north of that, you'll see that the columns get smaller and smaller, obviously, because it's getting lower to the water, right? Well, even that second layer of columns there are much, much smaller than the larger's. So the whole thought process was when they built this bridge was, well, we got to make these middle columns way, way strong because, you know, that's they're, they're so likely of a ship hitting them. Nobody, nobody ever thought about a ship going off and hitting this these lower columns here because they shouldn't be so far off in their navigation to where they would, right? But that's exactly what happened in May of 1980.
the pictures that we're looking at are pictures that I've hijacked from another video that I really, really think you should go watch. It's not a very long video. It's called, um, actually, I'm going to put their link in the, yeah, we'll put their link in the description below. So you guys, it's a full documentary on the bridge and what happened that night. And it's very well done. So you see these two little blockers to the right of the bridge, these little things in the water. Those are the, I, I call them blockers. A ship's supposed to hit that before they hit the bridge. To me, they're tiny, tiny, tiny. But wait till you see what the new bridge has on them. Okay, they did put these little things around the sides here for a while, thinking, oh, that'll keep smaller boats from running into the to columns and whatnot. But obviously a big boat would go right through that. But do you see how tiny the, the, the columns going further out are compared to the main columns? It's like they're just, they're huge. And then all of a sudden they go really small. Because they're not expecting a big boat to hit those. So they weren't built as strong. That's the ship that hit the, the Skyway. The difference between the old bridge and the new bridge is that the new bridge has a security system on it that when it gets a certain amount of fogginess, the, there's flashing lights involved. The, the lights start to flash and they shut it down. They'll shut the skyway down in a heartbeat now. And if you guys have, I guess by now you've probably learned this, but when the ships are going through these small channels, they're piloted. And then they're turned over to, I guess, the captain of the ship to take over after that. But there's certain specific people that pilot these ships outside of the channels. I, I don't know a ton about that. I just, I learned today there's pilots. I thought that was interesting. I didn't realize that. I thought it was the, the driver. I, th I thought it was called a captain. But the captains are not the one guiding the ship through these channels, uh, these bridges. Okay. What you don't see here is the second bridge. When they first built the bridge in St. Petersburg, it was so popular because it saved so much time. They built a duplicate one. And so you went from having a two-lane, two-way bridge to having two bridges with two lanes going north and two lanes going south. When the ship hit this side column over here, it took down the northbound bridge completely took it down just like the key bridge and if you look over to your left hand side right here you'll see where a portion of the bridge is still it's still still there see to the left it just said it, it just stopped that's so creepy to me but the rest of it went into the water okay that's where it just stopped now it was so foggy that morning that people could not see that the bridge had been taken down there were lights out on top of the bridge area. One witness had said he was coming up on the bridge and he saw that the lights on the bridge mo were moving and then all of a sudden went down into the ground and he knew something was off and he stopped and he started backing up. And he was waving as he was, he pulled, I guess he probably pulled over the side. He's got his hand out the window waving at these people to stop, stop, don't go any further. He said several cars and a bus passed him. All those vehicles went into the water. I'm going to read the description to you guys here in just a minute. So you'll know exactly what happened. Let, let me read that while we look at this. So the southbound span opened in 1971. In the case of the this, this ship hitting the Skyway Bridge, they said it was a sudden squall that, that caused it to be pushed to the side. And again, I'm going to refer you guys over to some of these videos that have some great information on them. Several vehicles were at the top of the bridge when almost a quarter mile of roadway fell away beneath them, while others drove off the edge, either because the drivers did not notice the collapse in the driving rain or could not stop quickly enough in wet conditions. So it was raining. I thought it was rain. So it's raining and foggy. I thought I thought I saw that it was just foggy. OK, and all six cars. I'm getting this from Wiki, by the way. In all, six cars, a truck, and a Greyhound bus plummeted 150 feet into Tampa Bay, resulting in 35 deaths. A few drivers, including former Major League Baseball player Granny Hamner, 
were able to stop their vehicles before reaching the gap, and as seen in many photographs of the aftermath, a Buick Skylark, I'll show you guys a picture of that in a minute, there's a Buick Skylark that's stopped almost right at the edge. They were able to stop the vehicle before reaching the gap, and it was driven by a local car dealer who skidded to a halt just two feet from the chasm. They got out and ran back to safety. It says afterwards that the frantic rescue effort became a recovery operation as only victims' bodies were found. The only survivor of the fall was Wesley McIntyre, whose Ford Courier pickup truck had bounced off of the hull of the summit venter and into the water. The truck sank to the shallow bottom of the bay, but McIntyre managed to escape and swim to the surface where he was quickly pulled to safety aboard the freighter. So the guys on the ship saved him. He sued the company that owned the ship and won a $175,000 settlement in 1984. It says today that would be closer to $500,000. But he actually did a lot of tribute to the people that lost, lost lives that day. Now, if he hadn't hit the hull of that ship before he entered the water, you guys, they said it was so heavy of impact from so high that it's, it, it's as if hitting that water would be the same as hitting a solid object. So you'll see in some of these pictures that the vehicles were damaged. And you, you can tell that was the impact of the water. Let's see. Um, John Laro, the, the veteran harbor pilot, he was steering the ship at the time of the incident, was cleared of wrongful doing by both a state grand jury and a Coast Guard investigation. The investigations concluded that the inbound freighter had been in the process of maneuvering into the narrow channel under the center of the bridge when a microburst containing sudden torrential rains and 70 miles per hour of winds cut visibility to near zero and temporarily rendered the ship's radar useless. Lara put the ship's engine into full reverse and ordered the emergency dropping the anchor when he realized that the freighter had left the channel. But the forward momentum of the 20,000 ton ship, along with strong winds, pushed the bow into support beams to the right of the, sh of the shipping lane. While the main support pier nearest to the channel withstood the strike with only minor damage, a secondary support pier just to the south was not designed to withstand such an impact and failed, causing the entire center of the southbound span to collapse. Oh, it was the southbound span? The southbound span? Oh, the southbound span on the side of the southbound. Okay. So it collapsed at 7.38 a.m. in the morning. Can you imagine you're just driving along? Oh, my word. One was a Greyhound bus. One was a, it came from uh, Tuskegee College or Tuskegee University. Most of the people that died were in the bus. I was, how, did that, how the heck do you get out of a bus that falls in the water? There's no way. I would have been scared to go over the other side of it, even if it stayed up. You know what else I thought about, you guys, is that the aftermath of this, they were talking about on the news of how the Key Bridge is such a huge thing in their area. Everybody uses it. And I was thinking, if you had to commute to work, if that if the Skyway had gone down when I lived there, there are a lot of people that use the Skyway to commute to work every day. And if ever there was a wreck or something on the skyway it would take forever to get home it didn't happen that often though in the years that i was there i because i used to go back and forth because i lived in st petersburg and i lit and i worked down in bradenton i cannot imagine if the skyway had completely gone down and you had to use the other way to get around it's like adding double miles to your car and it's going around and coming back down um and so but a lot of people would have would have to do that you'd have to I, bet, I would bet money there might be some people that have to change their job because their commute's so messed up from this. I know that's, that's, you know, petty. There's the car that stopped frantically. I know losing your job or, or changing your job is not a big deal compared to lives lost, but I think about just how what's happening right now is affecting people in Maryland and how it's going to affect them. Cause you're talking about adding, turning your commute from 
double to triple time to get home every day and go to work. It's so creepy to me. See how... Okay, that's... Is that part of the bridge they're pulling up there? Or is that a vehicle? I cannot imagine being that close to the edge. That would freak me out. There's the gentleman that survived. Again, I want you guys to watch this documentary this guy did. He did a really good job in it. And I'm going to send you over there because I think that I'm not going to be able to do you justice. I just wanted to give you a quick look-see on my end. And then you guys can go over and watch this documentary. It's not that long. You see how it only affected one of the bridges there? Okay. Do you see how the Brit? Oh, it must have felt. So when it landed in the water, it landed upside down. But that's what the impact of the water did to the bus. It's like hitting a solid object. It's so high up. What did it say? 150 feet? So sad. Okay, that's what you're looking at when you're driving at the Skyway and it's foggy. Much less raining. You can't see anything in front of you. This guy did a really good job of putting this together. This is the Skyway today. It's four lanes. This picture really doesn't do it justice, but what I like about this picture is it shows you how the support columns are set up. If you look at the support columns on the middle section here, they're huge, right? But they didn't just stop there. They put those, I say support columns. What do you call it? I call them bumpers. The bumpers in the water that keep you from hitting the bridge. But if you look further down, even they put, they put bumpers out in front of the other parts of the bridge as well. I don't see how those bumpers could stop it. I just don't see how they could stop a boat. See, do you see where the bumpers are now? So coming from either way, they, they're protecting each of these column, these smaller columns. Which I guess will happen when they rebuild the key bridge. There it is. There's the beautiful skyway that I know. At nighttime, it's really pretty. So anyway, I wanted to tell you guys about that because a lot of people were not aware. And, and listening to the Baltimore station this morning talking about this incident, there's like, never been anything like this. I'm like, I've heard of, I've seen some stuff. I, I wasn't there, but I've watched some stuff. And yes, the same thing happened in Florida, in the Tampa Bay area. So anyway, that's that's going to be it for now. I'm going to add his card to the end of this video so you guys can go over and watch the full documentary. He does a lot better justice than I do um, in my quick take here. But I found it very interesting, and you actually might find some of his other content pretty interesting as well. So thanks for watching, everyone. You guys have a blessed evening, and I will talk to you very soon.